The Why is Princess Luna a Teenage Anthro in My Life Now? Chapter 4 Your Story Was Just Demonetized When Midnight pulled into the complex parking lot, Luna had been scratching her mane and tail because of the dye, so they looked disheveled. Um, uh, are you okay? Midnight asked as they both went into the lobby. Our scalp and tail feel rather uncomfortable. She replied, scratching them as they made their way to the elevator. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, Midnight said. That coloring is already dried, so you can just rinse it off in the shower. So, that will help with the itching? He pressed the elevator call button. Yeah, just don't keep scratching at it. Okay, she said, slowly stopping as the elevator door opened, and they stepped inside. Good, he replied pressing the button labeled 12. A minute later, the door opened at midnight's floor and they made their way to his apartment. 12D. Bathroom's across from the bedroom, midnight said, pointing to the open door. Luna didn't waste any time in running to the bathroom, completely stripping on the way and not being bothered to even close the door or curtain. Uh, Luna, midnight said, walking into the bathroom. I'm fine with you stripping butt naked in my house, but please. He closed the curtain. Close this when you shower, it makes a huge mess. Our apologies, she said, over the running water. It's no problem, he said, going to the couch and turning the TV to the YouTube app. Oh, here's something interesting. He selected the video, I love alternate history hub. A moment later, the stream started. Let's talk about World War II. Suddenly, Midnight's phone rang, so he checked the name of the person calling. Ah, uh, he said, pausing the video. Admins. Uh, hello? He answered the phone. Yes, this is Shane Dawson, and I'm calling to let you know that your story has just been demonetized because of a line that was just used. Yeah, I know, touchy topic, etc, etc. Is there anything important? And no, I don't mean this is something important. Well, there isn't anything else. Go away. Don't call again, he said, ending the call and resuming the video. <sighs> Damn it all. A few moments later, Luna shut off the water and got dressed in the living room. Am I doing something wrong? She said, noticing Midnight staring at her. Well, I'm okay with shit. Given I don't go to jail, that's not exactly what you're supposed to do. Usually we wait until we're already in the bathroom before we strip naked. Oh. But I guess just do it anywhere so long as I don't have to step in, sit in, or sleep in something gross. I was unaware of that rule. People have been known to do much weirder. Ugh. Midnight said as he began setting up an Xbox One S. Um, anyway, uh... I want to start you off with something simple, like uh, Minecraft. Um, Minecraft? It's a game, he replied. Oh. He gave her a controller and loaded the game in split mode so they could play on the same console. Okay, so I've made a new world in creative mode, so the objective right now is to just build stuff. I see, she said, getting a feel for the controller. So... In creative mode, there are no villains or evil creatures? Uh, no. This mode seems to have no purpose. Uh, let me bump it to survival mode in the settings, Midnight said, changing the world's properties and setting the level to normal. Here it is. He loaded the world again. This time, there were monsters all in the world, something that Luna found very interesting, even though she couldn't easily engage in combat against the mobs. Ugh! She said after dying from the upteenth time. I could emerge victorious against these Endermen and Creepers if I were actually in combat against them. But you are. No, I'm controlling a character in-game who is battling for me. Well, that's as close as Hughes can get to actually have hand-to-hand -hand combat, he said as he set her controller down and stood up. Uh, what are you doing? I am going in-game to battle. You can stay here or come with me. Okay, you're telling me how you got here if I go with you. Okay, she said. I will hold true to my promise when we aren't in battle. Sure, fine, yeah, but would you like for me to at least load an arena first? She hesitated for a moment. Yes, that is sure to make a battle more fun. Alright then, 
he said, swapping to a generic fighting arena he had downloaded a few years prior. So, you ready? When the world loaded, she teleported both of them into the loaded world. Where are the monsters? Luna asked before looking at what she was wearing. What is this? Oh, a diamond armor and a sword. Of course. A few moments later, they were up against all the mobs that they had seen earlier. Endermen, creepers, zombies, slimes, skeletons, and a few other things. Wow, Midnight said after they were through. You kick ass. I believe we had an agreement, Luna said as she began to fly to a seat, take off her armor, and sit down. Midnight followed, but not before getting both swords and carrying them. Uh, you forgot this, Midnight said, handing hers back and taking his armor off as well. Thanks, she said, setting it to the side. Now, we have an explanation. If you still want to tell me, otherwise I'm fine. No, it would be wrong for me to bring you here under false pretenses. Well, go ahead then. Well, so my sister, Celestia, and myself were battling King Sombra. He used a form of dark magic on both me and my sister, hoping for an easy victory. His magic embodies the element of fear, and I'm not entirely sure what Celestia saw, but his attempt at making me overthrow Celestia and allowing him to ascend to be my equal gave birth to Nightmare Moon. From that winter to the following summer, I turned into Nightmare Moon many times, each being stronger than the last, until a few nights ago. My sister banished Nightmare Moon with the elements, and they seemed to have pushed us farther than the moon, sending me to your world instead. Our guess from our body's current form is my alicorn magic, but we, we didn't... She saw that Midnight had pulled her into an embrace and began to cry. It's okay, princess. It's... it's okay. It's not your fault. It was that magic. Everything... everything's gonna be okay. It was my intent to kill her. It was the magic taking over. We were... we were just so jealous. I'm sure Princess Celestia has forgiven you. Please, don't... don't... don't send me away. I won't. He said, patting her back as she continued to cry. It's okay. Just let it all out. It's okay. <laughs>